I hope you guys are ready to go back to the 80s because today I'm cooking a whole day's worth of meals from 1983. <laughs> Allow me to take you back. The year is 1983. The president is Ronald Reagan. The average cost of building a new house in the United States of America is just $82,000. Average rent is $335 a month. Gas is about 96 cents a gallon, and you can buy a gallon of milk for $1.35, a head of lettuce for 29 cents, and ground beef is only $1.49 a pound. The average income is about $21,000 per year, and you can buy a brand new Dodge Ram 50 truck for just $5,665. April 1983 also brought us the maiden launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger, and in June 1983, Sally Ride became the first American woman in space when she launched launched with her four crewmates aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger on mission STS-7. In September of 1983, Dr. Gion Bluford became the first black astronaut to fly in space aboard the Challenger's eighth mission. He also became the first to receive the U.S. Air Force Command Pilot Astronaut Wings. The video game Mario Brothers was also released in July 1983, first as an arcade game in Japan, and was later released in 1985 as Super Mario Brothers for the original Nintendo Entertainment entertainment system gaming console. In 1983, Fraggle Rock also premiered in January on HBO and was created and produced by Jim Henson. Many of the episodes featured stories that revolved around conflicts between the Fraggles and the other groups, despite the fact that they all depended on each other to survive. The show's creators had hoped it would promote concepts of world peace, and it was shown around the world in nearly 100 different countries. The final episode of the popular TV show MASH also aired in 1983. This episode actually remained the most watched television program in American history for 27 years. It was finally surpassed by the Super Bowl in February 2010, and its finale is still the most watched scripted TV show in American history 40 years later. A ton of top films were released in 1983, including E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Tootsie, Flash dance and trading places. The most popular music artists in 1983 were the police, Michael Jackson, Men at Work, Hall and Oates, Phil Collins, and David Bowie. Also, another fun fact is that the first mobile phones were introduced to the public by the Motorola company in 1983. A full charge for one of these phones took about 10 hours and offered only 30 minutes of talk time. It was priced at about $4,000 in 1983, which would be about $12,000 today. In March 1983, IBM also released the Personal Computer XT, which had a built-in hard drive. At release, the cost of this PC was $7,500, which would be about $23,000 today. Another fun fact is that Microsoft Word was also released in 1983, which is a common software that most of us use today on a daily basis. January 1st, 1983 is also considered the official birthday of the internet. Prior to this, the various computer networks did not have a standard way to communicate with each other. ARPANET and the Defense Data Network officially changed to this new protocol in 1983, hence the birth of the internet. In November 1983, America went bonkers for Cabbage Patch Kids. The dolls were so scarce and demand was so high that riots broke out in stores and parents were ready to drive hundreds of miles to buy them. 1983 was also the year that I was born, which brings me to the point of this video. I thought it would be so fun to cook a day of meals from 1983. I do collect a lot of cookbooks, but didn't own any from that year, so I took to the internet and ordered a few, including the annual 1983 Southern Living Cookbook, Betty Crocker's Step-by-Step -Step Picture Cookbook, Oscar Mayer's 100-Year Celebration Cookbook, and a few paperback-style cookbooks. Today for breakfast, I am making a really delicious quiche with some fruit cocktail. For lunch, a BLT salad with some cauliflower cheese soup. Dinner is going to be Swedish style meatballs with noodles and green beans with a delicious lemon cake for dessert. So let's get started. Okay, so you wanna know what they did not have in the 1980s factor, which is really sad because I feel like it would have made a lot of our parents' days 
a lot easier. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. I've been working with them for a while now here on my channel and I love working with them because their meals are so delicious and they're gonna give you guys a huge discount, so let me tell you about that. If you're not familiar with Factor, they make meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. Take this night for example, I made my kids chicken noodle soup and sandwiches for dinner, but I just wasn't feeling that, so I was actually able to pull one of my Factor meals out of the fridge, heat it up in just two minutes. I had a super delicious creamy chicken Parmesan meal that was healthy to boot. One way I also love using Factor is for lunches. If you're super busy like me running around during the day and you don't have time to think about lunch, you can keep your energy up with lunch to go. They also have tons of calorie conscious options. And I also love that they have keto and low carb and protein plus meals as well. So there's really something for everyone. This October, you can get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. All you have to do is choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered right to your door, ready in just two minutes with no prep and no mess. I also love that Factor is so flexible. I can easily adjust my order size, enjoy it with loved ones. In fact, my husband enjoys these meals as well, or even skip a week super easily in their app when I am out of town. The best part is that you guys are going to get 50% off your first Factor box. You can head over to factor75.com or click the link in the description box below and use code CHAPIN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's Chapin50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first Factor box. So if you guys have been watching my videos and you have not taken advantage of Factor yet, please make sure to check out the link in the description box below. I highly, highly recommend them. They're super delicious. In fact, my sister just tried them and she's like, oh my God, you're right. They're so good. You can use the link in the description box or tap the screen right here. And thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. So for breakfast to commemorate 1983, we are making a quiche and quiche was actually kind of special in the 1980s. So if you research some of the most popular foods of the 1980s, quiche is actually one food that was introduced in the 1970s in America, but then kind of peaked in popularity in the early 80s. So from the Southern Living 1983 annual recipes book, we are making a recipe from March from breakfast and brunches. This is the crustless, crustless potato quiche. So for this, we'll need some bacon, eggs. I've got half a bag of hash browns here that I've just thawed out. Some cottage cheese, about a cup of shredded Swiss cheese, green onion. Um, I've got salt and pepper, some hot sauce, and some paprika. Hello. I've just got a nonstick skillet over medium heat and I'm just crisping up this bacon. Once it's done cooking, I'll drain it and we'll crumble it up for the quiche. I'm gonna add five eggs to my bowl here. And if I actually would have read the recipe through before I started cooking, I would have realized that I could have waited to cook the bacon because I don't need the bacon until the end. But there you go. I'm gonna add some pepper, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. This up. I'm gonna add half a cup of cottage cheese and then a cup of shredded Swiss cheese, which is four ounces. So I just kind of took that off the block. Stir this up. I'm gonna add my potatoes. Maybe about a teaspoon of hot sauce, not too much. And then we've got some green onions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my kitchen shears and snip that right in there so it's a little bit easier. We're gonna put this in uh, a round pie plate. I've got one over here, I just need to grease it. And this recipe actually calls for putting, crumbling and putting the bacon on top during the last five minutes of baking, which I thought was kind of interesting. This is my favorite pie plate. I think it's actually a deep dish pie plate, but I find it works really well for both pies and quiches. So I just have some avocado oil spray or you can use Pam or whatever you have. I'm gonna grease that pretty well. Since there's potatoes in here, it might have you know, a tendency to stick a little bit. I'm just gonna pour that in there. 
as evenly as I can. And then I've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. So we'll go ahead and bake this for about 25 minutes or until it's set. So when there was about 10 minutes left of cooking time on the quiche, I removed it from the oven and added the cooked crumbled bacon to the top and returned it to the oven to finish cooking. Okay, so here is our delightful looking bacon crustless quiche or whatever it was called. I did have to bake it for longer than the recipe said. I feel like I have to do that a lot with egg recipes, so I'm not sure if it's just my oven. But I did let it set up for about 15 minutes so it wouldn't be super hot. See, even though I greased my pan, it still did stick a little bit. Yum. All right, so what else would go better with quiche than fruit cocktail? Does fruit cocktail remind you of the 80s? <laughs> I don't know if they had the very cherry kind back then, but that's what I got. So we've got our quiche here. I just garnished it with a little bit of green onion. Yeah, that's definitely good. I like I like that. Highly recommend that. It's got really good flavor. So if you want to make this, I definitely recommend it. I'll have all of the recipe information in the description box below. Yum. I'm very excited about today's dessert. It is from the Pillsbury Bake Off Classics 3 cookbook from 1983 $1.98 do you guys remember when these were like available at like the checkout in the grocery store I used to love getting these cookbooks in college too uh, we are making a lemon cream dessert cake so I've got two round cake pans here I like to line the bottom of mine with parchment paper so all I do is I take a piece of parchment paper I fold it into quarters and then I fold it into kind of like a wedge sort of like you're gonna make a paper snowflake and then I kind of put the point in the center and just cut around like this it's not gonna be perfect but you're gonna end up with a parchment paper circle that you can then fit in the bottom of your pan and that will help it come out a lot better so this is Baker's Joy it's actually a cooking spray but it's got some flour in it and so it really helps with baked goods I just spray the bottom and don't forget the sides obviously and then I put the parchment in there so it'll stick and then I spray the parchment a little bit just because we want to make sure nothing sticks don't forget to make a mess out of your stove in the process <laughs> honestly the reason I chose this recipe is because it used a cake mix because I know that making a cake with cake mix is going to be <laughs> delicious uh, I've got a cup of water in here. I'm going to add one third cup of vegetable oil. And then I need three egg whites. So I'm just gonna separate those over the bowl. Okay, I'm gonna add the cake mix. We're actually gonna use the yolks. So I need to take the shells out of that. I'm gonna combine this until it's well combined and then beat it for two minutes. So this is where the recipe says to fold in two tablespoons of lemon zest, which is what I have here. And then it also says to fold in uh, some shredded coconut, which I, I mean, I, it's not that I don't like coconut, I just don't prefer it in my desserts. So I'm not gonna put it in, but the original recipe did call for that. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and add my other bowl. That's the awesome thing about having two KitchenAid mixer bowls. And we're gonna go ahead and put the egg yolks in here and I'm gonna beat those on high speed for two minutes. All right, egg yolks are beaten. And then I'm supposed to add two cups of the white cake batter to here. I think this is gonna make like a marble cake. I'm totally just going to estimate. And I'm also adding three tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. So I'll mix this up. So I think this is supposed to be like a yellow and white swirled situation. It's not looking very yellow. The recipe doesn't call for this, but I think I'm going to add just like a few drops of yellow food coloring. All right, I've got this gel food coloring. So we'll see. It's kind of, I've used it before and it's kind of weak. 
That's better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, <laughs> we're gonna see how even I can make this. I'm gonna put half of the white batter into each pan. Definitely need a spatula to make sure you get it all out. Do you know how long it's been since I've baked a cake? I don't know why, but baking stuff like this just brings me immense joy. I need to do it more often. Okay, and then we've got our yellow. <laughs> this, this turned quite yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of swirl some over the top of each, and then we're gonna kind of like try to marble them together. There's no picture of this in the cookbook, so your guess is as good as mine about what it's supposed to look like. That's one thing I, you know, notice about collecting different eras of, of cookbooks is that obviously pictures for every recipe is, you know, a fairly newer uh, advent in cookbooking, cookbook making, whatever. And I assume it'll look better once we, you know, cut, cut the cake. You can see the marbling on the inside. I've got the oven set to 350. One thing I would say is that if you have a convection oven and you're baking like cookies or cakes, just make sure that you turn the convection, convection function off because it can make your cakes and your cookies brown too quickly. So we're gonna bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so here are the cakes. I have let these cool completely in the pans, uh, basically sitting on a wire rack. So I think they should probably come out pretty easily. Just, yeah. So that's how easily they come out. And then you can just peel the parchment off the top and then this will become the middle of the cake. And you can flip that one out too, just like that. All right, so for the frosting in the mixer bowl here, I've got eight ounces of cream cheese that I have softened along with one cup of powdered sugar. I'm just gonna whip this together. Okay, so I've got a box of this lemon pudding. It's the instant kind. I'm gonna whisk that together with a cup of milk. And then I'm also going to fold into the mixer bowl uh, one package of Cool Whip or four cups. And then I'm just gonna gently mix this until it comes together. Okay, so what I did is I also grated a tablespoon of lemon zest into the pudding mixture. And then I just drizzled it in to the frosting. So now we're gonna frost the cake. Okay, so I've got my cake stand here. I'm gonna put one layer on. And the recipe says to use about a cup and a half of filling for the middle. We'll have to put this in the fridge after we frost it because it's got, obviously it's got cream cheese in it, so it'll have to set up in the fridge. Okay, so if you're gonna frost a cake, I highly recommend you get an offset spatula. So I'll link some down below. I have lots of different um, sizes, but it makes, it makes frosting cakes a lot easier. So I'm definitely not a professional cake decorator, but I'd say that's not too bad. So I'm gonna put the cover on this and stick it in the fridge. So this next recipe that I'm making is out of Betty Crocker's step-by-step -step picture cookbook, which was also published in 1983. Uh, this is a cauliflower cheese soup, which I feel is like very 80s. I can remember my grandma on my dad's side making cauliflower cheese soup when I was a kid. But here's the recipe, and what we need is some cauliflower. It calls for a half a head of fresh cauliflower, but I had this already in the freezer, so I'm just gonna use that. I've got a couple tablespoons of butter in my pot, some half and half um, cheese Whiz. I've got paprika, allspice, nutmeg, some chicken bouillon. Um, it calls for white wine, but I don't have any on hand, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of water with a splash of vinegar, which will work just fine, and then some uh, green pepper. So the cauliflower is mostly tender now and I've kind of chopped it up into small pieces. I'm gonna add two cups of water. 
like a little splash of vinegar to kind of replicate the wine. You can add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon and then just like a tiny little dash of nutmeg and allspice. All right, I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of cheese whiz, half cup of half and half. All right, I'm gonna add just a little bit of paprika. Okay, so this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tiny bit of it into a bowl just to taste it and see if it needs any additional seasoning. Okay, so I need some bacon for the salad recipe I'm gonna make. Um, I should have cooked it this morning, but I obviously didn't think ahead. So I'm gonna cook this in the microwave. I just have it between some paper towels. So the salad I'm making is out of the Oscar Mayer Celebration Cookbook, 100 Years of Dedication to the Kid in All of Us. It has the uh, B-O-L-O-G-N-A song in here. It also has the, oh, here's the wiener jingle, in case you wanted to remember that. I think this cookbook is super fun. Um, like the pictures in it are just, look at that. So I am making a BLT salad, which is right here. So I'm cooking the bacon, I've got some lettuce in the fridge, some tomatoes, croutons, and then we're gonna make the dressing, which is just mayo, milk, mustard, and sugar. Seems very simple, so we'll see how it tastes. All right, so I've got half a cup of mayo in here. This is for the dressing. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of mustard, and then two tablespoons of mayo. So I thought iceberg lettuce would be appropriate for the salad. I've got some tomatoes in there, salt and pepper, bacon. I'm just gonna kind of tear this up. I can remember my mom cooking bacon in the microwave when I was a kid. Do you guys remember that? I don't ever think I even remember her cooking it on the stove. Not that we had it that often. Dressing, kind of an interesting dressing. And some croutons. All right, so here is today's 1983 lunch. We've got our BLT salad from the Oscar Mayer cookbook and our cheesy cauliflower soup. I just put a couple crackers on there and some shredded cheese. I'm actually very excited for this lunch. All right, let's try the salad first so the soup can cool down a little bit. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything. Okay, that's pretty good. That's good. I would make it again. I was very skeptical of the dressing just because it was like so mayo heavy, but like with the mustard in there, it's actually quite good. All right, let's try the soup. I did add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. That's pretty good. The, the cheese whiz is a different taste. I'm wondering if I should have used something different. It said pasteurized processed cheese spread. I guess that could have been Velveeta. Maybe I was supposed to use Velveeta. I mean, it's still good. Or maybe, it's supposed to be like the little English cheese spread in the jar. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. I mean, it's still good what the cheese was, so okay, I'm gonna go eat this. So for dinner, we're making another recipe out of the Betty Crocker's step-by-step -step picture cookbook. This is the Swedish dilled meatballs on page 38. I've got my ingredients over here. I'm actually gonna double this recipe because I figured I could freeze half for later. So in here I've got ground beef, ground pork, two eggs. I'm gonna make some fresh breadcrumbs out of some rye bread. So I've got my little food chopper here. I'm also going to chop up some onion. I've got some milk, some dill weed, uh, Worcestershire sauce, and salt and pepper. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the milk into the meat mixture. And then we need one and a half cups of breadcrumbs. So we'll see how much this makes. Okay, I'd say that's just about right. That was about three pieces of rye bread. Okay, and then for the onion, I'm going to put this in the chopper as well. You can dice it up if you want, like just with a knife. I absolutely cannot stand big chunks of onion <laughs> in my meatballs, so I'm gonna kind of like grind it into a paste. Okay, so let me just start mixing this together a little bit. Uh, you can do this in your KitchenAid mixer also. I find that that works really well. I'm using it for the cake that we're making. So if I'm not using my mixer normally, I'll just use a fork and it works pretty well. All right, to this, I'm gonna add some dill. I'm gonna add some black pepper and about two 
teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, so now that that's mixed together, I'm gonna preheat my skillet. I've got this skillet set over about medium, medium high heat. I'm gonna use some avocado oil that is a um, high heat oil, or you could also use canola oil or vegetable oil. I'm gonna wait for that to heat up just a little bit. Um, then I'll go ahead and add the meatballs. So I'm just rolling the meatballs into, I would say a little less than golf ball sized and putting them in my um, Dutch oven with some oil just to brown on all sides. These meatballs did turn out a little bit um, soft, I would say. I think if you use dried breadcrumbs, they would hold together a little bit better. Obviously they were still good. I was just very careful about kind of rolling them and turning them over. Overall, the flavor was pretty good. I really liked the flavor of the rye breadcrumbs in there. So they definitely did taste good. They were just a little bit more fragile than I expected. All right, so I'm just finishing up browning all the meatballs. Some of them fell apart, but that's okay. Most of them stayed, stayed together. Okay, and this, I'm gonna turn the heat down. And in this bowl, I've got some flour, paprika, salt, and pepper. And we're just gonna stir this in and then add some water to make the gravy. I'm gonna turn the heat back up to medium and just bring this to a simmer. I'm gonna grab a whisk so I can whisk everything together. Okay, so this has <clears throat> thickened up. I'm gonna turn the heat down and put in about a cup and a half of sour cream. I probably will have to salt this just because I tasted a bit of the plain gravy and it was very bland so I might add some Worcestershire or some more salt okay so now that I have seasoned that to taste I am going to add back in the meatballs carefully and then I've got water boiling for some egg noodles and we're gonna make some green beans I'm just gonna put this on like low low heat and put the lid on keep it warm Okay, so I've got a big pot of boiling water here. I just have a bag of egg noodles. I'm gonna put these in. These will cook for about seven minutes. And I'm also gonna salt the water. Okay, so for the green beans, I'm just gonna do two cans of green beans. I saved about half of the liquid in there so we could cook them in that. I'm gonna add, these are just bacon pieces. I'm gonna add some of those. And then I'm going to add, I don't know, probably a couple of tablespoons of butter. And then I'll just cook these for about 10 minutes over medium heat. After the egg noodles were done cooking, I just tossed them with a little bit of butter and kept them warm. And this was our dinner. So we had the buttered egg noodles with the uh, meatballs on top and the gravy, which turned out so, so good. And then the green beans on the side. This definitely reminds me of an 80s dinner because this Corel pattern actually came out in the 1980s as well. So I was glad I had this dish to use, but I'll have all of these recipes down below. Okay, so just cut some pieces of the cake. It's been in the fridge for probably, I don't know, two or three hours. Yeah, probably three hours. It's perfect. If you like lemon, I highly recommend that you try this cake. All right, so what did you guys think about today's video and all of these meals? Any of them that you remember from your childhood or what are some of your favorite recipes? Milo would like to know too from the 80s. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out Factor. I'll have that discount link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!